Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! So last year before the pandemic really hit, I was really into cosplays. This story takes place early 2020 at PAX South. I was there for the first time ever with my aunt and cousin. I was there as Celestia Londonberg, a character from a semi-popular video game called Dangaramba. And my cousin was Mikan, character from Dangaramba 2. We had so much fun together throughout the day, taking pictures with other cosplayers and playing video games. A little bit before we had to leave, a kid about 9-ish at the time ran up to me. She introduced herself as Kaylee, not her real name of course, and asked to take a picture with me. I said sorry kid, but I'm about to leave and I am super tired. The girl looked a bit sad, but I had a compromise. If you meet me at the cafe area tomorrow, we can take a picture then. She quickly perked up and ran off to a table not 30 feet from us. Soon, I heard the call of a wild Karen. The devil has been released. The woman stomped over to me and yelled in my face. Why won't you let my child take a picture with you? I backed up telling her I am about to leave and we can take a picture tomorrow. No boy, that set her off as she started dragging me. You will take a picture with my child right now. She huffed while dragging me and now I had heels on even though they hurt me and kicked her was one of them. She dramatically screamed that I assaulted her. Help! Help! This heathen assaulted me! She was fake crying and everything. I looked up to her child and she was red in the face, most likely embarrassed. A security guard came over and told Karen she needed to leave. She pointed to me and yelled, She assaulted me! I want to have her arrested! I just stared at her, no words, just staring. Sensing that no one believed her, she jumped at me, calling me in our words, a witch and a jerk. I couldn't even fight back as the dress was way heavy. I felt her get off of me just for her to jump on my leg. Crack. Everyone who was watching heard. Now, I wasn't crying because I was in shock. How do you like that, you witch? Silence. You could hear a pin drop. You witch. How dare you hurt me over a picture? I'm going to sue you. I yelled at her. Finally, my aunt came and saw me on the floor and looked flabbergasted. I swear my aunt was going to murder the lady but held back because of the guard. The guard then put cuffs on a lady and called back up in an ambulance. Ma'am, you are under arrest for assaulting a minor. She screamed as she was taken away and the kid's dad had to pick her up. Edit. Ah yeah, here we go. The lawsuit. I know many of you waited for this and I'm sorry for making you wait. As soon as my mother found out about what happened, she was livid and immediately sued Karen. Karen sued back with emotional abuse. In marshes, when we finally went to court and a little girl and her father were there. The father apologized on behalf of that woman. He told me he filed for divorce as well. I don't know how that went, but I hope he got full custody. Anyway, when Karen saw me at court, she gave me a stink eye. Like a really bad one. She was muttering under press and probably called me profanities or something. I didn't care to be honest. The court case was quick as well. A week. As no one wanted to put up with Karen's nonsense. And she accused me of emotionally abusing her. Or yelling at her that I would sue and that we should pay her $10,000. What? She says. This girl should pay me $10,000 because my self-esteem was broken, because I'm never denied what I want. She should have just taken a picture with my child, then none of this wouldn't have happened. I say, your honor. Miss Karen here tried to force me to take a picture with her child, even though I've already given a compromise. The guard was there and saw everything. Ask him. Karen looked smug, like she thought she would win the case. The guard gave his statement and also said they have cameras. And that's when Karen's face drained. Bingo. She tried to stop the case saying she won't sue us for the emotional abuse if we don't show the video. Ha. 
No, we countersued for $15,000 and I wanted justice. The video showed Karen was in the wrong. And the judge told her, Miss Karen, you are charged with assault of a minor. She was given about two months jail time and community service. And I got 15k and justice. My family friend, I will call her my teacher, is an ex-cosmetologist and an ex-beautician teacher. And now owns several highly rated salons and spas. Hair coloring, cutting, styling, manicures, pedicures and makeup. She knew I wanted to also do those things. But I'm currently going to college to become a music teacher. She decided since she has a salon near my college, she would teach me her old lessons and what was required to be taught on weekends after the shop closed. My days off in afternoon in exchange for work in reception and as her assistant. Booking appointments, greeting, checking people in, grabbing things and doing errands if needed. She also said when I got my license, she would hire me there so I can work during the last years of my college. Five-year degree. My dad gave me a loan to buy the things I would need to be able to do it when he found out. Over $1,000. And I could take out more if needed. For only this. And make payments whenever. No interest charged. My teacher gave me her old makeup kit. No makeup, just something for transporting it easily in. That only was dirty and didn't have locks on it. And my dad painted it white and painted cherry blossoms with my name in big neon pink letters on it for an Easter gift to me. I left my kit in my room, in a corner, behind my dresses for my musical performances for college, since quarantine. Now, my stepmom is just getting interested in makeup. I give her tips and a list of what products would be good for her skin. Mature, dry, sensitive skin. I even told her I'd give her a discount if she wanted me to do her makeup. The price of products used only. Her response was, why can't you do it for free? Or family? My entitled mother alarms were going off. I told her I need to pay back the loans I have and left when she started getting mad. I already didn't like nor respect her at this time. If I leave for a night, I lock my bedroom door and bring the only key to my bedroom in the house with me. I went to a family barbecue for Memorial Day weekend to aunts, to uncles, my grandfather, my teacher, her boyfriend, my mom, myself and my two cousins, 1614, and stayed two nights. When I came back, my bedroom door was unlocked, which was a red flag since it's a force of habit to lock it. I looked and saw my kit in the middle of the room open. That was a red flag factory. I just broke down and cried. My dad saw me and saw what was in my room and he knew that it was all wrong. My stepmom came down wearing the makeup from the kit and wondered what was wrong. My dad asked her what she had done and my stepmom told him, Well, I made a copy of her key and borrowed your stuff. Makeup is cheap and you can replace it. I almost punched her. My dad took her into the garage and tore her a new one. She cried, said he was overreacting, and drove off to her son's slash daughter slash brother's house. I calculated how much it would cost for me to sanitize, clean and replace the things that couldn't be sanitized. Eyeliners, mascaras, broken brushes, broken powder products, whole palettes that have been completely destroyed and so on. And also shipping for all of it. It came out to over $750. Out of my palettes was $44 alone. No shipping. It was a personal favorite brand of mine. My dad sold one of her sewing machines, returned the build it yourself dollhouse that he had bought her, and sold things of hers until he got over $900 all in cash. He used some of that money to replace my locks, only one key was made and transferred the rest of the money to my account, which I used to get what I needed to replace everything. Using my code that all beauticians have to get a small discount with certain brands. I ended up having about $100 left over and used it to buy my dad's father's day gifts 
and the rest gave the leftover money as loan payment. When my stepmom came back, she freaked out at my dad and I for destroying her hopes and dreams. All I said was, you break it, you buy it. She screamed at both of us and said she deserved all the things she paid for. I was pity enough to have left her all the broken and unusable makeup and brushes where her sewing machine used to be with the cost of each product plus shipping taped to it. She refuses to look, talk or even be in the same room as me now. And my dad said that she had one more chance before he kicked her out for good. So yeah, happy ending. But my stepmom is still as entitled as before. I also lock my room now and keep my personal makeup in my room. Quick add-on. My dad always told me something. Don't piss off and slash or miss with people who handle your food or money. Money and time are two things you should never waste. So when my stepmom had done that and missed was technically my money, he was pissed that she was wasting mine. So he made sure in the end she only wasted her money and not mine. Update. My dad loves all the comments you guys have made about him. He thought he was being a jerk to her and this has made him know that he was in the right. Another update. My stepmom, out of childishness, poured and splashed water all over the fridge. It froze overnight and now it's having to force things out of the freezer to get it out. My dad sent out a group message that something had split and everything was stuck and my stepmom replied, You're getting a taste of your own medicine. You ruined my life, so I will ruin yours. So yeah, my dad might kick her out now. Huge thank you to all the people sending support to me. Thankfully, my next client isn't until September, which will be my aunt's wedding makeup. Side note, I fell asleep but when I woke up, my stepmom wasn't home yet. I asked my dad, who's up making guitar amplifiers out of old speakers, his side job, and asked where she is. He said, not looking up from his work, she won't be here for a little while. I'm going to let her rethink her choices then decide while she's gone if it's better or worse for me while she's away. I feel like he's nicely saying he kicked around, but it also might just be a break. Also, he saved the freezer. A big thank you. Well, I'm crying. You guys are so amazing. The ones who offer support are such a happy welcome in my life of being alone. And the ones who donate their spare makeup that they don't need anymore, thank you so much. I love all of you for helping me in this crisis. I posted this thinking I'll get verbal support to help my dad realize he needs to leave her in the comments, but instead for a support system of kind and caring strangers. Thank you so much, all of you. So I'm adding a quick story to tell you what type of guy my dad is as a parent and human. While shopping for things to wear with my prom dress, my dad quietly emailed my mom a $500 to shop at Victoria's Secret because he wanted to help with prom shopping even though he was away working. I ended up getting PJs, a pair of sweatpants, and new stuff before I started college. Update. My stepmom is upstairs with a U-Haul on our front and has her brother, children, and their daughter's spouse throwing stuff in a U-Haul. I went upstairs to find them front door wide open. I put my non-outdoor cat in my room, thank god she was still in the house, moving stuff to the U-Haul. My stepmom saw me and I pulled it back into my room and locked it. So now me and my rescue cat with anxiety problems are waiting for my dad to get home because she is bounding on a door, threatening to kick it off. I have pepper spray next to me and a pocket knife if I need to use it. Yeah, I'm that scared. I've also called the cops, but they are still dealing with the Atlanta riots, so I don't know about them. I'll update when this is over. So yeah, the cops arrested my stepmom for assault. She spit and scratched one of the officers, resisting arrest, trespassing, and theft. She stole money from my dad's toll fund. My dad, of course, pressed charges. The people who helped her move didn't know she was not allowed to come back and apologized, then cursed us out when we still pressed charges against my stepmom. They left with a U-Haul. My dad and I agreed to pack her stuff up and bring it to her with a U-Haul they rent. 
So we will do that this weekend, Saturday, and then spend Father's Day with Takeout Indian for lunch and pizza for dinner while just spending alone time together. So that's the end for now, because we all know she's gonna come back. By the way, her stuff is gone except some things that would make up for what my dad paid for her car. Big payday for him and he's using it to get a car since his is broken down. I'm gonna update once I hear from my dad about how my mom's surgery is. She's having two surgeries back to back today and trying to get the worry off my mind. Thank you all for the support and I hope this is the end of it. My mom is fine and home now. The phones in the call center are open from 9am to 8pm and I work a later shift from 11.30 to 8. One week, the following happens. Monday, I clock into my job at 11.30am do 5 minutes of setup and start taking phone calls from customers by 11.35. Sometimes during the day a memo comes down from the corporate. Call center representatives should start taking calls the moment their shift is scheduled to start. Tuesday. In order to avoid working off the clock, I clock into my job at 11.15 am, do 5 minutes of setup, 10 minutes of administrative work, and start taking phone calls from customers at 11.30 am. When my shift officially starts, I clock out at 8 pm, having done 15 minutes of overtime that day. Wednesday. In order to avoid working off the clock, I clock into my job at 11.15 am, do 5 minutes of setup, 10 minutes of administrative work, and start taking phone calls from customers at 11.30 am when my shift officially starts. Sometimes, during the day a memo comes down from corporate, overtime is not approved for call center representatives. I clock out early at 7.45 pm in order to avoid doing overtime. Thursday. Starting at 11.25, I do 5 minutes of setup, I clock in at 11.30 and start taking calls immediately. I stop working at 7.55 but don't clock out yet. I'll be damned if I let corporate make me a victim of wage theft. Over the next 5 minutes, a couple of calls from last minute Karens come in. I don't take the calls and at 8pm, I clock out. The customers eventually hang up, disappointed. Friday. Starting at 11.25, I do 5 minutes of setup, I clock in at 11.30 and start taking calls immediately. Sometimes during the day, my boss comes to talk to me. When you clocked out at 8 last night, there were still customers waiting in a call queue. Why didn't you take their calls? Sorry boss, my shift ends at 8 pm and overtime is not approved for call center reps. Oh well, you're allowed to stay late to finish up the customers a call in. Sure thing, boss. Can I have that in writing? Later that day, a memo comes down from corporate. Overtime for business needs is approved for call center representatives. At 7.59, a last minute Karen calls in. I help her until 8.05. I clock off at 8.15 to make sure I get paid for the extra 10 minutes of work I did. Keep trying corporate. I am hourly. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.